Hello folks and welcome to the next lecture. This is lecture number four in unit three and today we're going to talk about particle motion and relate that in terms of diffusion. So we're moving a little bit away from phase changes. We'll still relate some of the things that we've done before but this is kind of some new stuff that we'll be talking about. All right so let's start off here and let's take a look here at the particles and nature of particles. Now right now I'm using a very general term in terms of particles. Particles can be atoms, they can be ions, they can be molecules, but in any form of matter the particles that you have are going to be very very small. Now I know we've talked about that in terms of you know how small they, they're going to be, but sometimes it's very hard to really register how small some of those particles are actually are. So we look at in just a single drop of water there's 1.67 times 10 to the 21st particles and in this case this would be molecules of water or H2O. Now you look at that number and we know we have scientific notation and we had a kind of have a good idea of what that number represents but sometimes it's very hard to visualize you know what that actually means. So what I'd like you to do is click on the link that's going to come up here in a moment and stop the video and it kind of gives you a representation of what some of these numbers, especially ones in scientific notation and very large exponents, what these numbers actually represent. So this link is going to come up. Please pause the video and just kind of go through it and look at some of these numbers in relation to how we visualize pennies and how big these numbers can actually be. Okay, so welcome back. And hopefully you saw that when we're talking about very large numbers, those numbers really add up and they really can amount for a lot of space. All right? In the case of the pennies, you saw how large they can actually go. Well, in these particles of matter that make up water, we already know that they have attractive forces. And we discussed those in the, when we were looking at our phase changes that solids typically have a greater attractive force than liquids which typically have a greater attractive force uh, than gases or vapors and if you look at the, di the, the diagram over there on the right all right if we add heat we can actually break those attractive forces to go from one phase to the next but the other thing about matter whether it's solids liquids or gases is that they're always going to be in constant motion now for solids those that motion typically is just going to be vibrations. But in liquids and gases, because you have very weak attractive forces, those particles are going to be able to move randomly about. And liquids as gases and even plasma, when we talk about charged gases, those particles kind of have free reign of how they're going to move. So what I'd like you to do here is please pause the video again and click on the link that's coming up for particle motion and see how matter moves, especially in gases, and take a look at what those particles of matter are doing in the demonstration that you're going to see here in a moment. All right, so welcome back. So you saw that those particles have kind of represent ping pong balls. If you've ever watched the lottery and you know that particles are bouncing off one another. And as I mentioned before in matter, motion can be either vibrations or what we refer to as uh, random motion. Now we refer that random motion as brownie in motion, not, not your favorite dessert treat as a brownie in motion. But brownie in motion was kind of a way that was used to explain the randomness of those particles and we're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow when you come into class and how gases work and some examples of that Brownian motion but we already know that all motion pretty much ceases now at absolute zero and with the experience that we've had with that we know that that's going to be at zero Kelvin or negative 273 degrees Celsius so you have a lot of things going on with matter whether it's in a solid whether it's in a liquid or whether it's in a gas and those happy little particles are moving around in any which way they want to. All right, so it's time for everyone's favorite part of the notes in our brain break. So why don't you get up from, from your, your chair, get moving around, get the blood flowing, maybe go lift a few hundred pounds, get yourself psyched up. So today's Chuck Norris fact of the day is Chuck Norris once ordered a Big Mac at Burger King and got one. I don't know if you and I could do that, but we all know Chuck Norris can. All right, so moving on here. Today we're going to look at diffusion. In your lab tomorrow, we're going to be looking at diffusion as far as particle motion and how particles spread out. Now, when we took it, talk about the spreading out of a particles in a fluid, we're referring to either, whether liquids or gases. 
solids, we don't get diffusion in solids other than the fact that they may be dissolving in a liquid or a gas because the attractive forces are too strong and solids have a definite shape. But in liquids and gases, the particles are allowed to flow. They're able to move about randomly, whether they're bouncing off one another, bouncing off the container that they're in. And that flow is through Brownian motion. And with Brownian motion, it, it explains that random motion. So when we look at the example down here at the bottom, if someone sprays cologne or, or maybe you get some sort of smell, you have a candle in your house and you can smell it about, that's because the particles of gas or the particles of vapor, or even liquids in some cases, have spread out throughout the container. They spread out throughout their house. And that's why gases, we say, don't have a definite volume or definite shape because they tend to take the shape of what their container is. Other examples would be the smell from cooking. Thanksgiving is coming up very soon. You know that when everything's being cooked in the house, you're going to be able to smell that in all different parts of the house. Or even just a simple example is putting food coloring in water and watching the food coloring spread out in the container of water. All right, so to finish up here with diffusion and what our lab is going to be talking about tomorrow is diffusion rate, how fast or how slow a gas or a liquid diffuses or spreads out depends on a few things. One of them has to do with the mass of the particles. All right, the other one has to do with the speed of the particles. Now, the mass of the particles, that's as large as how small those individual molecules or ions or atoms may be. But the speed of the particles can be either heat or motion and we look at hot fluids versus cold fluids or maybe we're stirring or maybe we're blowing on it how that affects diffusion and this is explained by Graham's law of diffusion and the flow of a rate of a fluid is proportional to the mass and the temperature of a fluid and like heat a fluid will always flow from a contain from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We said how heat always goes from high energy to low energy. Well, in gases and liquids, they're going to diffuse from high concentration where the particles are packed really close together to an area of low concentration where they can spread out and give themselves their, give themselves enough room. So this concludes our notes for today. Tomorrow when you come in the lab, we'll be talking briefly about diffusion and Brownian motion, and then we're going to be looking at how these diffusion rates occur. So see you tomorrow.